Hi there. Um, I am Klipsky. I am the developer, designer, programmer, whatever behind um, Democracy 3. This is Democracy 3, this game here. And this is a sort of experimental video filming it like this. Um, this is a new video which is going to talk about an expansion to the game called Electioneering, Democracy 3 Electioneering, um, which we announced a few days ago. And I'm going to do a bunch of these videos talking about different aspects of it. So I thought what I'd do is do an introductionary video um, that basically quickly shows you everything that's in there and um, I'll go into more depth another time. So um, the easiest way to, to, to get into this is to look at the way we've added new concerns to voters. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick this bunch of religious voters and a focus group just to get to a focus group early. Um, I'll pick one without a scroll bar to make it easy. Who was that? That was that one. Okay, so this is a voter in um, in the game as you know it now, and this is how they make their decisions. So this voter is in all sorts of groups. Um, everyone's in everyone, and uh, this is the strength of their membership in all these different groups and what those groups currently think, and how that all feeds together into this particular voter giving me an 86% approval, so they will vote for me if they vote. They may not vote. Now, what I've done is we've added um, three extra inputs at the bottom here, perceptions, funding, and ministers. And you can see one's positive, one's very slightly negative, one's very slightly positive. And these are, are all um, churning into this as well. And obviously everyone has a different, uh, they were quite fanatical, um, a different opinion. So there you go, 49.6. So, you know, that's really on the edge there of, of them not voting for me. So, you know, adjusting one of these minor things down here would make the difference. So what are these things and um, how do they work? So you will probably know about this button up here, which has always shown you parties and the number of members in your party and the number of activists who are people that help get the vote out. So they're the people that give out leaflets, they knock on doors, and on, on election day they're slightly, can we be bothered to vote people, and more likely to vote the more activists you have. Now we've expanded on that. So as well as um, you know, eventually becoming activists and always voting for you, members always vote and they always vote for you, obviously, um, members also pay into your party. So you raise money from from your members. Um, this is kind of like grassroots raising you know loads of like sort of five dollars, ten dollars from you know that vast number of people that um, that support you. In addition to that there are big party donors and I'll, I'll come on to that in a minute. But basically members are more relevant now. So I'll go through these things in turn. Um, this is a new thing, manifesto pledges. This only happens just before an election and basically what happens is here you can make a promise that I'll do this if you elect me. I'll close Guantanamo, I'll build a wall, you know, whatever. Just throwing those out there. Um, so in this case you, you don't get to define it, everything. So like these are pledges that you could make. So we could say I will cut income tax by 25% in the next term if you re-elect me. So we can make that pledge, and I've made that pledge now, it costs, I think, uh, three political capital to do that. And you get a kind of fractional impact as though you'd really done it. So it's so fractional that the socialists, they're kind of, you know, I mean they like income tax, they like progressive tax. So there's a, a, a marginal change here, and um, capitalists are pleased, middle income people are pleased. But they don't really believe it until you've done it, but you can get a slight boost there. So this is kind of like a time offset thing, saying, I know the election is tomorrow, but trust me, I'll do this. Um, you will then be held to that, and we'll talk about that another time. And so you can make a bunch of these if you like. So this is, uh, this is one of the more interesting and fun things. Um, you can make a speech, like a big speech and you can only do one per turn and you can do these in the three turns leading up to the election and to make a speech you basically select from a bunch of sound bites which are kind of like slogans um, you know things you're going to sort of put out there to be remembered by 
And ge generally speaking, if you pick a soundbite, it will make some people happy and some people unhappy. So, um, for example, here, if, if turn that one off, you can select four. But if I make this one, that make the poor ha uh, very happy and the wealthy slightly unhappy. So that's kind of like saying it's about time the wealthy, you know, paid their way for less fortunate people. So voters are going to respond to that in different ways. Um, and there are some sound bites, for example, this one here, which has no downside. But actually, it's to a voter group that's fairly unimportant to some extent because they're only 26%. So, so this is farmers. So this is the soundbite where I kind of say, hey, what about those farmers? Isn't farming cool? Um, which has no downside and farmers will, will love it. Um, so I can do that. I, I can be, you know, I, I'll say something patriotic, something about the countryside, um, screw the rich, and I will say, um, aren't retired people great um, and young people annoying? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what we'll go there. Anyway, you, so we can do that and we can give a speech. So, um, oh dear. So this is like one of these wiggly worm things that they have on TV in debates um, in various countries. And that's showing me what everybody th in the country thinks um, as I go through my speech. So th there was obviously a lot of young people. So that was negative. That was a mistake. Um, the rich people, you know, that was a mistake. But I kind of won it back um, here. So we don't know what the overall effect is there, but we do know that it could have been better. These were possibly bad choices. Um, but it depends. Maybe, you know, maybe we've given up on, on young people anyway. Anyway, so that's, uh, so that's, that's speeches. Give up on the young. Um, so fundraising, new exciting stuff. This is a chart of how much money we've raised since we um, since we first got elected at you know the start of the game, um, or the or, you know the previous election. So green is us, red is the other guys, girls. Um, we're not doing so well. We're not doing so well, and that's been quite consistent. Their support kind of like dropped a bit there. I don't know if you can see that. So basically, this money comes from either the grassroots membership or rich people. So in our case, it's, it's like 50-50, because we haven't had as many members. We've still got less members than the opposition. So um, half our money is coming from donors. In their case, they're more um, grassroots. They've got more members, um, and it's presumed that they've also got donors. So they're doing better than us. These are our four donors at the moment. You just like get given donors, and new ones will crop up um, over time. So. I'm on dodgy ground here because these two donors here, they're both religious capitalists and I don't know exactly what I've done but I've upset um, religious capitalists somehow. So their happiness is pretty low and his generosity is really high so he's the like richest donor to my party and he's not happy. So I need to keep an eye on this if I upset the religious people or capitalists um, after the election. He will quit as a donor, I will stop getting money. Uh, and, and that will be bad, I'll have to wait for a new donor to come along and, and this is going to affect me quite badly. Um, so that's all new stuff. This is other new stuff, perceptions. This is what the electorate think of me at an emotional level, nothing to do with policies. Uh, they have no opinion on me in terms of whether or not I'm trustworthy. They do think I'm a strong leader and if I click here I can see I survived an assassination attempt, I've got a big space program, I'm probably a bit Vladimir Putin-esque in, in some respects with some of my policies, so I am perceived as strong. I'm also weirdly perceived as compassionate. Um, if I look here, childcare provision, food stamps, you know, I'm a caring guy, um, but then we have the death penalty, so that kind of holds me back. So, say for example, um, I think, well, maybe I should be worried about this fact that no one particularly thinks that, that I'm trustworthy. Um, okay, fair enough, we can we can do a stunt. So we'll do a media stunt here. And this is kind of gambling, really. So, for example, say I want to invite cameras into my home. So let's get uh, the, the TV crew to come in and interview me um, and my family um, at home. And that will, will make me seem like an ordinary, trustworthy kind of guy that's got nothing to hide. 
Um, of course, the risk is that my home is, is you know, either some monstrosity that embarrasses me in some way, or there's a copy of Mein Kampf on the table, or whatever. You know, I don't know. Um, you know, something could go wrong, and these things do go wrong. They have gone wrong in the past. Um, the, there was a famous example in Britain where an MP um, was pretending to be kind of interviewed in his kitchen, and it turned out it was his servant's kitchen or his second kitchen. Um, anyway, these kind of things happen. So there's a risk here. This is um, has the highest upside out of these uh, potential media stunts. Um, it could boost my perception 32%, 50-50 whether or not it will work and it will cost political capital. <laughs> okay, so a copy of Atlas Shrugged or something. I don't know. Um, you know, something something bad happened. I invited the cameras into my home and that was a big mistake and I now look stupid. Okay, never mind because, you know, things will be okay. So, uh, the final thing that I'm just going to quickly rush through in this video is uh, to actually show you the election because we've changed the election screen so it looks like this. Um, so here we go, we start the vote and drop photos into whichever bucket. We're going to win, it's looking pretty cool that we're going to win. Interesting, see, that, oh, very interesting. Uh, I think I have a bug here, I've been playing about with the perceptions with, with this stuff today. I need to look at this because I'm not sure how to represent this. Um, it's it's yeah, it's very interesting. Um, anyway, so the, the, there's more information here. We can see how much um, we spent on on the campaign, how much they spent. Um, they spent more than us, so you know that um, that lost us some votes. My ministers were pretty good at campaigning. This is some uh, another thing that um, I'll, I'll show you another time. Um, so that was positive. I'm not sure whether or not that's a bug or not. I suspect that's a bug. Um, this is interesting here. I, it gets very complicated. I had a bigger boost to turnout because of my activists than they did, but my turnout was lower than theirs. And without becoming really boring, um, that's that makes perfect sense <laughs> because um, you, the turnout that you get. Is, is to some extent dependent on how extreme you feel. So if I support the government, but not massively, things are okay, um, I'm kind of on the fence, but I support them, on the day I might not bother. If all of my voters are like that, they're kind of happy, but not happy enough to bother voting, and, and all the opposition really hate me, their turnout will be huge, and my turnout will suck. So actually, we really needed that activist turnout boost, um, because, we were really coasting on it with our supporters. Um, it's really hard to explain stuff like that visually, um, which is why some people say, oh, my game's got problems or whatever, and it's like, no, it's it's just very complicated. Anyway, um, that's enough of that. So um, this is some of the new stuff in the electioneering expansion, which is coming at the end of July, hopefully. There will be um, many more videos talking about this sort of stuff. Hopefully this all works. Um, so please, you know, subscribe to this channel and uh, keep an eye on the game. You can already add it to a Steam wish list or uh, just, you know, bookmark it and buy it from me. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this and I really hope it recorded because I've lost my voice. Thank you for watching.